It does seem that when it comes to Black Lives Matters or environmental protests or when it comes to uh, the Invasion Day protests uh, or pumping brine out of wetlands at St Kilda, the Greens and others in the political world and even the bureaucracy and even the police are willing to either turn a blind eye or actually put the back burner on when it comes to enforcing the law, but they will jump on top of people if the narrative is contrary to what the government or public bureaucracy is wanting to achieve. Some bad habits have developed when it comes to democracy and our freedoms here in Australia and we've heard from the New South Wales Police in a statement that yesterday they deployed 900 police officers to quash uh, protests against the lockdowns all over New South Wales, including in our flow broadcast area uh, in the Riverina near Wagga Wagga. There was uh, four arrests, uh, sorry, four fines issued, I think it was, uh, against individuals protesting in or around the council chambers, we understand. So 900 police officers in New South South Wales, looking at the total active police force there, one in 20 New South Wales police officers were out in force to stop lockdown protests yesterday. Now, it's quite deafening to see in the political realm that there's absolutely no protest from uh, politicians uh, condemning this heavy-handed police presence dealing with these protesters. Perhaps you even listening might think, well, that's fair enough. These people were putting public health at risk by attending these protests. But just let's look at the double standard we've been experiencing here. Uh, the South Australian Greens, for instance, today, they say they're going to sit, in, uh, stand in solidarity uh, with a lady who's going to take the law effectively in her her own hands, or at least sail very close to the wind with the law to protect the environment, to protect some mangroves in St Kilda area, uh, where they're concerned about the briny discharge from a local evaporation plan, uh, and the local operator they feel, uh, these environmental activists, isn't doing enough to stop this briny discharge, so she's going to turn up and do it herself, and the Greens' Tammy Frank MLC will be with her during the morning today, standing in solidarity with her right to uh, protest or take the law into her own hands. Now, let's not forget the Greens have long fought for the right to protest when it comes to the environment. They've chained themselves to equipment in Tasmania. Even former leader and Greens co-founder Bob Brown uh, had a fine that he never paid for a long time for protesting in that fashion, which it took Dick Smith. Yes, it was Dick Smith who bailed him out to make sure that fine was paid because there was talk at one stage that while he was a senator, he could be made bankrupt for not paying that fine and lose his seat in the Senate. Uh, And so Dick Smith bailed him out. So the Greens have had this very strong position that you need to protect people's right to protest. And yet during the pandemic, it seems some protests are more equal than others. Because let's look at, for instance, what happened in South Australia earlier this year. We had a Invasion Day protest around Australia Day, where the protesters were wanting to say, well, it's not a day to commemorate, it's a sad day for Aboriginal Australians. Perfectly fine if people want to protest about that. But at that time, the South Australian law required that you had a COVID safe management plan for any type of public event with a large public attendance like that one. Yet political Political sources tell us that the Invasion Day protest had zero active plans, zero um, iterations of that plan before it was finally approved. It never had a COVID management plan. And yet a walk for life, a pro-life protest about the Marshall Liberal government's abortion law changes to make abortion more accessible in South Australia, they went through 10 iterations to get a COVID safe management plan and it took a lot of time for them to secure that. So you had an Invasion Day protest under the same laws that had zero COVID management plans and a pro-life rally that was required to go through 10 iterations before they had one. It does seem that when it comes to Black Lives Matters or environmental protests or when it comes to uh, the Invasion Day protests uh, or pumping brine out of wetlands at St Kilda, the Greens and others in the political world and even the bureaucracy and even the police are willing to either turn a blind eye or actually put the back burner on when it comes to enforcing the law, but they will jump on top of people if the narrative is contrary to what the government or public bureaucracy is wanting to achieve. Uh, Just take, for instance, the recent appearance by people, again, a legitimate cause to to protest, uh, people showing solidarity and upset about what's happened in Afghanistan. Now, on the same day that there was a police repression of anti-lockdown protests, we didn't see the same police presence or involvement in stopping people protesting about the 
situation in Afghanistan. I think it's really concerning for our democracy that that's the way things are heading, is that law enforcement, politicians, legislators take a preferential view depending on the cause as to whether the freedom to protest applies to some but not to others.